Revolutionize, Optimize, Lead. He began his airline with only one leased DC-3 and turned it into an aviation transportation legend which revolutionized and energized an entire industry. Founded in San Diego, his airline exemplified the world's friendliest atmosphere in the air. Distinctive orange, red, and white airplanes recognized immediately by their beaming smile. Though this airline stopped operating over 25 years ago, each year hundreds of former employees still meet to remember it and the man who created it. The airline is Pacific Southwest Airlines. Founder, Kenny Friedkin. It's not an exaggeration to say there would be no Pacific Southwest Airlines without Kenneth Giles Friedkin to his friends, Kenny. Born in Utica, New York on September 1, 1915, he later moved to Kansas, but finally San Diego, and San Diego was the better for it. As a child, Kenny was fascinated by the Barnstormers, those crazy young men and their flying machines who took air show flying on the road to a young nation yearning to know more about flying. Well, it inspired Kenny, and at only 17 he took his first flying lesson, an instructor by 23. Flying was his passion, and he was driven. It only got better. Now in his early 30s, he became chief flight instructor and director of training at a flying school in Glendale, California. And at the beginning of World War II, Kenny trained a diverse group of pilots, including some of the first women to fly, and who ultimately ferried aircraft for the military services, the famed Women's Auxiliary Service pilots, the WASPs, and Canadians who later fought the German Luftwaffe in the skies over England and Europe. His students were always the best. That passion he held was infectious. The nation was now consumed with the war effort, and in 1942, Kenny's career changed just a bit. Accepting a position as charter pilot for Consolidated Voltees Transport Subsidiary, Concertway, leading to a position as a test pilot for Consolidated. But the war ended and Kenny teamed with friend Joe Plosser and opened the Plosser Friedkin Flight School in 1946. His wife Jean ran the office. They were a team and she supported him all the way. A year later, Joe sold his share of the school to Victor Lundy and the school was renamed the Friedkin School of Aeronautics. Again, Kenny's timing was spot on. Many of the students at the Lindbergh Field Base School were former military pilots needing to obtain their civilian license. Kenny also offered charter flights, aerial banner towing, and more, a background which afforded Kenny the experience he needed later at PSA. But flight instruction and banner towing decreased to a point Friedkin Aeronautics could no longer survive as a flight school and banner towing operation. So what did Kenny do? He decided to expand into an airline offering flights from San Diego to the Bay Area. The name now, Pacific Southwest Airlines. The PSA legend was born. PSA's first airplane, a 28-seat Douglas DC-3, was leased for just $2,000 a month, and on May 6, 1949, PSA flew its first flight, offering service to Oakland. The one-way fare was $15.60. It was bare-bones airline travel at its finest. PSA from Lindbergh, just one agent with one telephone in a converted Marine Corps latrine. Kenny believed San Diego's Navy members, young sailors, would be perfect passengers for PSA, and so many bell-bottoms flew PSA. It was nicknamed the Poor Sailors Airline. At first, PSA flew just San Diego and Oakland, but soon daily flights and a stop at Burbank were added. PSA's advertising slogan as the world's friendliest airline lived up to its claim. The onboard face of the new passenger service quickly became the flight attendants, known as Stews. Their job, comfort and safety for this new, young, and attractive airline. The low fare, friendly service took off, and by 1953, they transported over 115,000 travelers flying four DC-3s. The airline was a family in every sense of the word. Kenny's wife, Jean, served as director of the board and, and edited the airline's newsletter, Skylines, she was even elected vice president of the corporation. PSA's West Coast routes now included L.A. and San Francisco, flying the much-anticipated Lockheed Electra. Jean designed the interior, brown, cream, and turquoise, and cocoa brown gabardine stew uniforms. No one looked more friendly or acted it. Like the years that preceded it, the 1960s was a decade of continued growth. However, it was also marred by heartbreak. On March 17, 1962, Kenny passed away unexpectedly from a cerebral hemorrhage. Every PSA employee mourned his death. After all, he was the father of the business, the family. 
J. Floyd Andrews, one of Kenny's personal friends and longtime employees, took over as president, vowing to follow Kenny's example and ensure that PSA was a friendly, low-cost airline. Andrews led the airline well into the 1970s. As more routes were added, additional aircraft were needed to keep up with demand, and in 1964, six new Boeing 727s were purchased, and soon DC-9s and 737s joined the fleet. But this was a -a one-of-a-kind airline, and in the 1960s, PSA branched out into other enterprises, including flight training and hotel operations. Perhaps the highlight of the decade was in 1968, with the dedication of a state-of-the-art headquarters and maintenance facility at Lindbergh Field. The airline was an industry force. However, others might argue PSA's best move in the 1960s was the introduction of the miniskirt in 1966, or when the first smile was painted on one of the airplanes for a television commercial in 1969. It became so popular, the smiles were painted on every PSA airliner. That smile will be remembered forever by all who flew the airline. The 1970s was a new decade, and PSA's status as a cultural icon was solidified, and its reputation for inexpensive fares, friendly service, and beautiful flight attendants spread throughout the United States. So much so that executives from a new airline in Texas dispatched representatives to San Diego to observe PSA's operations. That airline was Southwest, today's model for a low-cost alternative to the big carriers. But the new decade brought a new uniform with an even shorter skirt. The airline even purchased two wide-body Lockheed L-1011s and took one on a world tour. But a sad, tragic accident still remembered in San Diego occurred when a privately owned Cessna 172 collided with PSA Flight 182 over San Diego. All 135 on board the 727 died, including 37 PSA employees and the Cessna crew of two. Seven people on the ground were also tragically killed and 22 homes destroyed or damaged. It is the worst air disaster ever in California. PSA would not survive the decade. After nearly 40 years in business, the little airline Kenny Friedkin created was now serving 30 cities in seven western states, offering more daily flights than Pan American offered throughout the entire world. The fleet had grown in size to 55 aircraft and served millions of passengers each year. Throughout all the growth, PSA remained headquartered in San Diego. But with the increased competitive era of airline deregulation and airline mergers, PSA was brought out by U.S. Air. The last PSA flight was April 8, 1988. It was over, but never forgotten. Its successful business model, offering low-priced, efficient, and friendly service, ultimately copied by other airlines who today consider the PSA model the norm, an atmosphere of friendliness others seek to emulate, as an organization in which former PSA employees still gather annually to relive the camaraderie they experienced as participants in one of the most unique airlines of all time, for creating the friendliest airline in the world, the San Diego Air and Space Museum takes great pride in inducting Kenneth Giles Kenny Friedkin into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame.